All right, just gonna make a video showing how Calvinists like to rip 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 out of context and twist it to teach again that man has no free will in the context of salvation. So let's actually look at the text and see what's going on in context and comparing scripture with scripture because every cult will always base doctrine off obscure verses taken out of context and they will not compare scripture with scripture or cross reference what's going on, cross reference scripture. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from, hath, from be, hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Not too good at reading on a computer, but so they, they home in on the, oh, chose you, for, chose you to salvation. Uh, so like any other twisted proof text, it's, taken, it's important to look at the context of what's going on there. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. Okay, let's look at the context. But we are bound to give, th sorry, to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So notice a couple things there. Notice the key wording in verse 14, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Compare this with Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and Romans chapter 8. Verse 23 and 25. 23 to 25. I do apologize. Romans chapter 8. Running on some lack of sleep, so just bear with me. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans chapter 8, verse 23 to 25. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Uh, for we are saved, we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we then do we with patience wait for it. What's it talking about? What's it? Well it's talking about the rapture, the redemption of our, our of our corrupt bodies of flesh, our corrupt bodies of sin. It's that simple. So notice how it's talking about when God saves you, your eternal salvation, your, your eternal destination is fixed. I'll put it that way. You can also compare this with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, which says that, that you're seated in heavenly places at salvation. So you're already, if you're saved, you're already seated in heavenly places. Also with uh, John 14, verse 2 to 3, where Jesus says he's preparing a mansion for you in heaven. And of course, second Peter, or for, sorry, First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, which talks about you're kept by the power of God and you have a place in heaven reserved for you that does not fade away. Okay, you're going to obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, at, the, at the rapture. Your destination is fixed. This happens at the rapture when God takes away your corrupt body of flesh and gives you a glorified body. So when 2 Thessalonians 2.13 talks about God choosing you uh, for salvation, we have, to look, we have to look at the context and compare these verses. It's referring to the fact that when you are saved, your eternal destination is fixed and the salvation of your corrupt body is fixed. If you're born again, your spirit is redeemed, redeemed and sealed. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 and Romans 8, 15 and 17. Your soul is redeemed from hell. Psalms 49, verse, verse 7 to 9. Psalm 49, verse 14 to 15. And Psalm 89, verse 48. Uh, that's what's going on. However, your body is still corrupt. Your soul and spirit is redeemed and saved, but your body is still corrupt. That's why it's talking about the redemption of your body. Also compare verse 13 with Philippians 1, 6. It says in Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he hath, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, what's it talking about? Well, Second Thessalonians two verse thirteen to fourteen is also referring to the post salvation sanctification and spiritual regeneration. The problem is that Calvinists believe that regeneration comes before faith. So Calvinists have the cart before the horse. Second Thessalonians two thirteen in context is referring to the fixed eternal destination of the believer and the post salvation sanctification of the spirit. It is not saying in, in any way saying that God chooses some for salvation or that mankind has no free will in the context of salvation. So they're, tw they're twisting it and taking it out of context. So just yet another one of the proof texts they like using that is taken out of context and twisted, and they do not cross reference scripture to see what's going on. Whenever whenever someone gives you a verse that is obscure and isolated, you have to look at the, the surrounding verses and see what's going on and also cross-reference. Because a cult leader will always rip obscure verses here and there, they'll isolate one or two verses and base doctrine off that, which is what Calvinism does. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.